What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is the day. Time for the installation video for the BC Racing coilovers on the old Infinity Q50. Let's get started. First things first, remove the back seat. This is actually a pretty simple procedure and we're actually going to start with the front uh, coilovers, but uh, once I get this thing up on jack stands, I don't really want to be crawling around the back seat. Uh, so we're just going to get it out right away. So you can see under the front of the seat here is this little tab, a handle here, this little, it's like a little spring loaded pull tab. So there's one on each end of the front seat. You just pull it and it sort of releases it and uh, you can pop, this, pop the, uh, the bottom cushions up. There's the one side. It's hard with one hand, always is hard with one hand. There we go. And it pretty much just pulls out. See? Backrest portion is pretty simple as well. It's just a few nuts. Actually four. One on each corner two here in the center, and then it sort of lifts up and back. And that is just four 14 millimeter bolts, or nuts, sorry. Now, sort of Lifting that seat back, this little hook here, up and out. Now we have to take these plates off, uh, which expose the uh, mounting studs and nuts inside here for the rear uh, coilover. So we'll take these off too so we don't have to crawl around the back while the car is lifted up in the air. We're starting with the fronts, obviously we've removed the front wheels and now the hood is popped and we're going to remove this strut tower brace by taking out these three nuts, one here, here and here on each of the strut towers and that actually releases the top mounting portion of uh, the shock, you know, the, the spring and strut assembly. Essentially these are basically coil over systems, it's a coil over a shock or coil over a strut. Uh, that again will release the top. It'll be held in here because everything's connected with this whole uh, assembly. But as we start to disconnect those pieces, uh, we can lower this down and uh, take it out. The strut bar is held on by a 14 millimeter nut, by the way. And then these are down here. Uh, top mount of the strut assembly is or 12 millimeter nut. Just crack them. It's easier just to break them loose while everything else is assembled below. So looking at this here, just before disassembling, um, I'm just looking at the order in which I think I'd like to do things. Um, I may end up doing the brake installation during the same time because I have everything off and because the wheels are here. Um, but for the time being, I'm going to leave the caliper on the rotor uh, just to keep things simple. But I do want to make sure I have enough slack in the stainless line. So I'm just going to pull this clip out here, which will free up 
uh, the brake line, giving me a lot more flexibility. Then I think I'm going to disconnect some of these lower components like uh, the sway bar end link. And I'm trying to remember what else I had to disconnect. Um, I actually think that was it, just the sway bar end link. And then I'm gonna put uh, the jack under here to hold it up uh, because we have to take this bolt out here uh, disconnecting the assembly from the upper control arm and if you don't support uh, if you don't support the the entire assembly uh, there's a lot of pressure put on this bolt so when you pull when you uh, try to back it out it can ruin the thread so I would just suggest putting a jack under here to support it uh, taking the bolt out here and then lowering it down slowly once everything is loose uh, that's just been my experience I forgot to mention also that we'll break this bolt nut and bolt loose also um, before we lower it down uh, because you need some leverage, some significant leverage, or an impact gun. Uh, break that one loose before you drop it down. And that's about it. The fronts are pretty simple. I forgot I had this handy dandy breaker bar kind of uh, tire iron situation going on here. So I was able to break uh, that nut loose. And so I will actually get to work and uh, take this bolt out here and we'll drop it down just like the original plan. 17 millimeter here. pressure down on this upper control arm so it doesn't ruin the threads and see it wants to come loose. So now I just went ahead and removed the nuts and the uh, strut tower brace bracket off of here. I have the nut off of the, um, the lower uh, strut mounting location and uh, We'll just push that back out uh, once we have the whole assembly lowered down. So let's uh, try to do this without breaking anything. I like to put all my hardware back together so we don't lose any pieces. forward all the way lower this down I hope you're seeing this let's see we'll put the nut back on the end here the other nuts on the uh, sway bar end link. This whole shock and spring should pop out easily. It's like, yeah, Don't scratch anything. There we go. Boom. What do you think, guys? Tain S Tech lowering springs for the next giveaway? Oh boy. All right, we got the first BC Racing coilover front ready to go. These come with the preload set uh, from the factory, so we shouldn't have to do anything other than install. And we can adjust ride height accordingly. I didn't realize this, but they actually came with uh, rear extensions for the dampening adjustment. I didn't realize that, and I almost purchased some. Um, but I got some in the box, so that's cool. All right, let's, uh, let's throw this sucker in. So I have this sort of just set into place for now, uh, down in the saddle. 
and uh, it's all totally loose but i just wanted to kind of get everything lined up the uh, end link pushed in through this bottom mounting uh, section not tighten anything up we'll get a couple of the nuts started on the top side just to secure the coil over in place and uh, then we'll reassemble everything Got a couple of the nuts up top to secure your coil over. Um, again, we put the bolt through the bottom mounting point there, and now we're just putting the upper control arm back in and supporting everything with our knee. Here. Let's tighten everything down to spec. And the first, oh, yeah, put our end link back in the sway bar. So I'm going to do what worked best for me the, on the passenger side, which is put the top first, secure the couple of the nuts on the top side of the strut tower, and then we'll lift the lower control arm up to where we seat the mounting point. That makes it a little easier to control and makes it a little easier to get everything lined up. And now we'll raise this lower control arm up to where this is seated properly. Push the bolt through. We'll lift it up to push the top hat flush. And we'll secure everything in. So we got everything tightened back up. The only thing now to do is to put the wheels back on. The liquid that you're seeing on the ground is just brake cleaner because you know I had my hands and stuff all over the the uh, rotors and you just want to make sure you get rid of any grease or anything like that uh, so it's a good idea to spray down your rotors after uh, you know messing around in this area before putting the wheels back on uh, so we're gonna throw it back on and I guess lower it down see what it looks like because we're already lowered in the rear with the springs I will have a good idea of what the car is gonna look like with coilovers um, and I guess we'll just see what it looks like and adjust ride height as needed. So let's do it. All right, wheels tightened up. Let's lower it down, see what happens. Does that look lower? I can't. No. It's not really lower than what we were, honestly. Am 
might be a touch lower. But I always could just get into my glass knuckles here. All right, guys, we are back. It is time for the rears. Um, first thing, we already talked about this, but before we get the rear end in the air, um, we need to take these little plates off. And that's just done on both sides. One thing I'm going to recommend when you're doing this part of the job is do it first before your hands get dirty. Um, or make sure you wash your hands or put on a clean pair of gloves uh, before doing it because your headliner will stain very, very easily. Um, and you'll end up touching it. You're going to try your best to not touch it, but you will. It's almost a guarantee. So uh, that's my recommendation. Make sure your hands are clean or wear a fresh pair of gloves uh, messing around in this back end portion. Uh, because that stains and it sucks getting the stains out. Make sure you have your 10 millimeter socket handy for these because you're going to need it. And now you can see the three nuts exposed on the top hat of your coil. So you can get some light in there for you. There you go. Easy enough. Butterfly ratchet works really nice on these uh, because you need to get up and over and down into that back corner one. So it's a little tough to reach, uh, but it's doable. So what we're going to do in the rear, guys, I think, is just disconnect the uh, sway bar in link down there and then disconnect the um, you know the shock itself um, and that should give us enough flexibility I think we have enough slack in the brake line to get it out of the pocket I think the rears are pretty simple in terms of uh, disassembly uh, I have the, the small nuts uh, disconnected I left one uh, attached up top and we'll remove that one ready to drop this whole thing uh, but that's about it rears are pretty simple the most difficult thing in the rears is actually getting the studs to line up with the holes uh, when you replace the hole uh, when you replace the coil over so uh, not looking forward to that but uh, let's let's see how smooth she goes here Sway bar end link uh, nut is 14 millimeters, by the way. Uh, this here for the bottom uh, mounting point of the strut is 17. There we go. A little nervous, just hoping not to strip it. I didn't realize this, but it wasn't recording. Um, I had to take a, just a long screwdriver or pry bar and get it underneath and kind of lift up, which pushes this whole kind of assembly down. And just to get it off of here, you know, it kind of gets seized on a little bit. I sprayed a little WD-40, where the hell, here. And just kind of lift it up and it popped the, popped the shock up off of its little perch here. Now, I've already taken the last nut off the top, and you guys can see, i try to provide enough light here, this is ridiculous. Uh, it's loose. Just gotta pull her out. Now the thing that blows about this is that we have to use the factory top hats. So we need to get our spring compressor. And uh, take this spring off. So we can use, reuse this portion on the new coilover. Actually, it doesn't seem to be a ton of pressure on the spring. Um, and if I, you know, they're much shorter because they were lowering springs. So I actually, I don't think 
we're, we're going to need a spring compressor, which is good news, but you need a 17 millimeter wrench to hold kind of this, this offset wrench. Get a hold of that nut, and then we need um, an open ended wrench. Probably an adjustable wrench would be the best. So yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of pressure, but I did put it on the ground for the last few turns and just held my foot on the spring. Um, and you know, it, it sprung out a couple of inches, but it, it stayed intact. So I, I'd recommend using uh, spring compressors just to be safe. Um, but you know, I'm an idiot, so I did it without. Uh, if these were factory springs, when you're if you're installing these lowering springs, if we happen to give these away, definitely use a spring compressor on your factory springs because those suckers are much taller than these and they will be storing a lot of energy. So uh, you don't want to mess around uh, with those because these are lowering springs and they're significantly shorter. Uh, you know you don't you don't squeeze them as tight to get them to fit on your shock. So uh, they don't hold as much energy. They're not as compressed as far. You know at rest uh, but your factory springs will be so definitely want to be careful all right we have the new coil over here um, again we're just using this portion there's a little bump stop in here and this sheath just pops off um, and there's sort of an area where the spring stops so you kind of know how to orient it um, just for alignment purposes, you can kind of look, there's a hole on this side, this side, and this side. So three corners, essentially, they line up with the three corners of the top hat. So washer, I'm actually going to reuse the factory nut. And on this one, you just need an Allen wrench to stick in there. One thing I'll point out too is that when I did my lowering springs, I was obviously paying attention, which is good to do, and I marked the front corner of the top hat. Put a couple little scratches in here, so that uh, helped me orientate uh, the top hat properly on the spring uh, back when I did the lowering springs, but it also was a reminder this time around uh, in terms of orientation for how it should be installed going with the coilover so that was helpful all right this is actually a pretty important step uh, using the spanner wrenches supplied by bc racing uh, you, we're going to adjust the preload um, your these these collars here uh, may come tight on the rears the fronts you don't have to mess with but because rears the spring was loose and just kind of flopping around and we had to reuse our top hats uh, we're going to have to adjust uh, the preload so Essentially, back the smaller collar down. You may have to loosen the the, the top one a bit, uh, but you want to tighten it. Just you want to tighten this top one, just hand tight. Uh, basically, as tight as you can get it with your fingers. <clears throat> That's pretty tight. So as tight as I'm gonna get it. A little bit more okay and then you push this tighten this lower one up until it makes contact that's tight now you use your spanner wrenches to move this top collar up basically compressing the string the spring which is preload um, so we're going to be turning it this way clockwise you don't even need the smaller wrench just tighten this one to create a gap between the two. And I think, I want to say it's, five, maybe it's five millimeters, but it's basically the width of the wrench. When you can fit the wrench in this gap that you're creating, that is when preload is set.
Okay. Well, the wrench fits in there well. Then you just tighten the smaller collar up, crank it down, snug it up, and that's basically acts as like a lock nut. And now your preload is set and secure. Uh, we can adjust ride height later on, but we're going to just go with this. Boom. I've been using the, reusing this little paper piece. I don't know that you need to, but I sort of don't like metal to metal contact. This yeah, it is metal, but I don't like metal to metal contact, so it's just easy to put that on. This is the part of the project I hate because I can never get coilover studs to line up with the holes up in the tower here. We know the orientation we're going with, and um, hopefully it just falls into place. But... So what I ended up having to do is just stick my fingers up there and feel around for the hole and the studs, get them to line up, and I caught one, and I could get the rest to line up, and now we're just raising it with the little jack. Uh, up into place and now we should be far enough in to where we can see the nuts or the studs yes okay so now we can put our bolts on and we'll think about putting our uh, damper extensions in there I just went ahead and tightened them down right away so those are good. Uh, then we'll go secure the bottom side. I'm gonna get to the sway bar and link here. Uh, let's see. Righty, tighty, lefty, loosey, guys. Make sure you tighten everything to proper torque specs. Like me. That's really good. So I have our end link done. Everything's in place. Again, we'll adjust ride height later on. We'll see what she looks like with the preset ride height. Didn't even have to take the brake lines off or anything. The rears are simple except for getting it up in the pocket. That's a little annoying, but otherwise, pretty straightforward for rears. Oh shit. Dang, that's low. Definitely lower than it was. Nice. Let's get the other side done now, jeez. So same thing here. Disconnected the sway bar end link. Uh, can you see it? Right there. And then we've just taken this bolt out. You know, we uh, let this relax a little bit, took the bolt out. We still have one nut up top holding this in again. And now this is completely relaxed, so what we got to do again stick a screwdriver in there and kind of pry it off so uh, that's what I'm gonna do now hopefully you can see it just like that I'll we'll take the nut off the top Same situation. I don't know if you can see. This little tab goes in the back right. So we'll just remember that. This little part with the scratches again that I left in the front to know that that's the front. Again, remove top hat, put it on the new BC Racing rear coilover, 
and uh, we're good to go. That works. Let me show you how much recoil this thing has. Getting toward the end. Just a little pop. That's it. God, I might have got it right away. Yes! Sometimes it helps just to support the sway bar a little bit just to make sure uh, you're getting this nice and smooth and you're not forcing it ruining threads or anything. And just to be clear, guys, I'm not a mechanic, so although uh, I'm just kind of going through the steps here in terms of how I would do this, um, very well could be missing steps or doing it maybe uh, not 100% perfectly or by the book. So maybe just use this for research purposes only, but not necessarily a specific by the book how to. Okay, all right. There we go. I guess there's a potential to kill these bushings in here. Cramping them too tight. This is the last time I'll be mounting these wheels in this car, at least for a while, because the wheels I got are a completely different style. So they're they give they're gonna give the car a totally different look. These are more these just seem really beefy. And uh I wanted to get a, a look at what the car looked like. Slammed. See if a gap changes at all. <sighs> she looks good. She looks good, boys. It gives the car a little bit more negative camber, so actually the fronts are a little more tucked in than they were before. Which kind of makes me wonder about the wheels that I got a little bit more, um, not in a negative way, just uh, curious maybe it could have gone a little more aggressive. But uh, looking good, we gotta get this thing out of the garage now. All right, so the last thing left is to take care of our dampening adjustment extenders. So this is the dampening knob that goes on top of the uh, coil over. I could have put it in before I installed it but didn't or whatever it doesn't really matter. So there's a little set screw here. Just loosen this up with the supplied Allen key. And you can see that the knob fits in there perfectly. Right? So I just, you also have the same lettering on the top of the extender. I just line them up. I don't know that it necessarily matters. To make sure they're both facing in the same direction. Tighten down this little set screw. Like that there. And then we go to the rear of the car. Sort of Allen shaped end that goes down into the coilover itself. So what I'm, my plan is it's actually to go through the seat belt. And this kind of pops out. Like this. There's actually a split. Let's say you can, you can see. Let me see. So it's flexible. So you can put the extender through here pretty 
simple. Just like that. So you still have this sticking up. Now, you can see, extender just goes right in top. And you can kind of feel it feed down into there and set and you know you have a you know have it in there uh, nice and snugly and if you were to twist the knob it twists down below as well and you can feel it the little clicks so there we go I'm not going to put everything together just because you never know when you're going to need to make further adjustments or if you want to change something up or you forgot to tighten something down I always drive around for a day or two with the back seat out you guys I really hope you found the video helpful um, this new camera is cool but the stand that I have for it or the tripod is obnoxious and very difficult to work with and I hate it so I'm going to have to upgrade that, but I hope that I was able to capture at least some of the important steps in the installation of these BC coilovers. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll definitely try to help you out as best I can. Again, I'm definitely not an expert, but uh, it was a relatively easy installation, especially after having installed lowering springs myself in the past. It just made uh, the whole process a, a real breeze and because their coilovers are a little bit more uh, compact and everything fits a little bit better you know, without as much uh, resistance to it. So very, very easy installation if you have a little bit of experience doing it. Um, without filming, I could have done it probably in three hours, I, I would say. Uh, so not too bad. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll help you out as best as I possibly can. Otherwise, a lot of great things coming up, guys. The wheels are here. Uh, the brakes, we have all the components necessary for the big brake upgrade. Uh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a totally different car after the next uh, couple of days. So stick around. I'll film the entire process uh, and that's it. Uh, looking forward to it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So thanks for following along and uh, we'll see you in the next one.